Hi. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk about which costs you should and could include in your funding needs. My name is Victoria Yampolsky, and I run the Startup Station. So once you determine the amount of time for which you are raising financing, you should then focus on a category of costs that you're going to include in that race. Category number one, variable costs. If you are at an earlier stage, I do not recommend that you include any costs that vary based on the level of your sales. They are called variable costs, okay? And there are two exceptions to this rule. Number one, if the variable costs are greater than your revenues, so there is a gross loss that you are realizing, then that actually generates a capital need for you. And then you should consider revenues just in this case. For example, it could be that when you're launching, you are going to institute a referral program and going to incur a cost just in the beginning to drive up user numbers. Okay. Situation number two is when variable costs vary based on the number of customers or users, but not based on the level of sales. For example, customer service costs or AWS costs. In those cases, if the amount of those costs is large, I would include them. And if not, I would just make sure that they're covered by a contingency, right? Which is the safety cushion you should always add to your funding needs. Category number two, fixed costs. And here we're talking about salaries, marketing budgets, bookkeeping expenses, legal expenses, office expenses, meals and entertainment, travel, etc. Right? So these are the costs that are required to operate your company as if you're making no money. Okay, so you would incur that cost regardless of the level of sales. Category number three is working capital. Okay, and the working capital consists of three parts. Inventory, credit that you extend to your customers or accounts receivable, and credit that your suppliers extend to you or accounts payable. Again, I recommend that you do not include accounts receivable because it's tied to revenue or accounts payable because it reduces your funding needs, but you do consider inventory. That's especially important for product startups because you absolutely need to spend the money to manufacture the product before you can sell it. Category number four, is capital expenditures, right? Or the money that you spend on acquisition of fixed assets. Again, that's more important for product startups that may have significant expenditures on product equipment or manufacturing equipment or lab equipment. And that is important for software and service startups that we only have computers and furniture. So depending on your situation, you should analyze which costs must be included. Of course, in the end, as category number five, we should always include a contingency. It typically varies anywhere from 10 to 20% of the uh, subtotal amount. If you want to learn more about all of the accounting concepts I mentioned here, please take course number one. Um, and as always, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.